Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 6. So the opening uh, three episodes for this season on The Flash have been, you know, quite strong, pretty strong. Arguably the, the strongest start we've had uh, to a new season for quite a bit. And by strongest start, I mean, or well, I don't mean like like a mic drop, a mic drop moment every episode. Uh, even though you could argue that that has really happened in each episode, whether it's big or like a bit of a small mic drop, it could have happened still, but... I'm more talking about consistency, like each episode knows what it is doing, what its goal is for the episode, um, or goals are for the episode, and it is pretty much nailing those goals, and to me at least, it's just great to see. But obviously one of the big things that has been front and center, as well as just like lingering in the background in general as well since episode one, is of course the impending crisis. Of course, Barry learns that he's supposed to die in episode one, then Barry learns that he has to die in order to save everyone in episode two, and that is the only potential future in which everyone survives, the, the one where he dies, and now it's all been revealed to Team Flash, um, you know, what's up, that Barry's meant to go, which of course is going to affect them as we head towards uh, the big crisis event itself at the beginning of December. But one of the big things, uh, like pretty big things to happen in the most recent episode of The Flash was the arrival of the new Harrison Wells for this season, that of course being Harrison Nash Wells which I don't think we have an Earth number yet for as to where he's from, which I'm sure they'll reveal that to us soon because it might have a bit of meaning to it. Now, he had a bit of a different arrival and I guess introduction for this season compared to other Wells, like something we haven't really seen since... I guess, season two with Harry Wells from Earth 2, you know, RIP. And that was that Team Flash didn't bring him over to Earth 1. He was already here and, and was actually just found by Allegra, who was, of course, the new employee of the Central City Citizen. So in the past handful of seasons, they've recruited the Wells to come in, but this time, he basically just falls in their laps. Now, we know that this Wells is supposed to be here for the whole season, and he's going to have an arc in the first half that then leads into what happens to him in the back half of the season. And from what Eric Wallace, uh, the new showrunner for The Flash, has said, he won't be Pariah, and a Pariah will be a different version of Wells. And for those that are, that, you know, that are unaware, Pariah will be a big part of the Crisis crossover and is essentially like a worker, if you want to, uh, want to call it, for the Monitor, like an unwilling worker, and is actually the one that sort of unleashes uh, Crisis as he gives the anti monitor uh like a sort of a, a route out of his prison if you want to call it now the pariah in the comics essentially sees all the earths get destroyed as they get destroyed so it's a pretty big emotional part so it would be interesting to see if these two are the same character now this new wells was also seen on set for crisis in the same outfit as we saw him in during episode three so you could argue he's not Pariah, which would line up with what Eric Wallace said with him, you know, that not the same character, but Pariah does survive Crisis, unlike some other characters, uh, well, in the comics, at least he survives, so I guess we will have to wait and see what happens there, um, but yeah. But as we saw in episode three, this new version of Wells was looking for a substance, or yeah, we'll just call it substance, uh, called Eternium, and didn't really have that much of an interest in hanging around with the other members of Team Flash, in that case, it was Cisco and Iris. And just sort of wanted to go about his journey and find the Eternium. Now, we are supposed to get a backstory for this new Wells and why he is doing what he is doing. Apparently, it's meant to be very emotional. But at this point, he just seems really interested in that goddamn Eternium. And he may have found what he's looking for down that manhole at the end of episode 3. But Eternium is actually a massive hint of something that was actually already hinted at a couple of weeks before the Flash premiered for this season. And if this is actually setting up what it is hinting at, then, well, wow. We're going full-on comic book canon in regards to Flash canon, and I, I'm all for it, to be completely honest. How they explain it will be interesting and a bit trippy possibly, but oh boy, am I ready for it. But of course, I do want to hear your guys' opinions on what we will go over in this video in the comments section down below, whether you believe it's true, whether you have other different theories. Let me know your opinion regardless if, if it's small or big. I want to hear it because I want to get like a general feel of what everyone's thinking. And of course, if you want to enjoy the video and you like the idea of this, drop a like on the video to show your support and just likeness? Is that a word? Let's move on. Now, as I said, Eternium was mentioned a few times by the New Wells when we saw him in episode 3, as it is what he was looking for, referring to it as a multiversal element, and even had a device that picked up on it, which of course was an Eternium detector pretty much, which of course led him to that manhole which we saw right at the end of episode 3. Now, in the comics, you know, DC comics, Eternium is essentially what makes up the Rock of Eternity, which is the, you know, the, the area 
um, where the, the wizard Shazam lies, if we're calling it that. Um, so obviously that's just connected to that whole Shazam part of the DC universe, which is of course a part of the magical side of the DC universe. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you would have seen many, I guess you could say like well, many like channels and stuff, I guess you could say were sort of like clickbaiting the whole like Shazam connection thing with Eternium. When I think it is literally, well, when I think it literally, uh, literally, sorry, has nothing to do with that at all but rather something else that is connected to its first appearance in the comics that then connects to another character on the show's history in the comics as well. It is important to remember that Harrison Nash Wells says, there's no such thing as mystical mumbo jumbo or gods. What there are are medhumans, aliens, and false gods worshipped by simple-minded people that find comfort in myths. I dispel those myths. So Harrison Nash Wells or Nash Wells isn't into the whole mystical magical side of things. It, you know, he doesn't believe in them. So that isn't his connection to Eternium. He's not looking at it to prove some magical thing right. It's for some other reason. But what does Eternium have to do with one of the characters on the show? Now, I have to put this out there just so I make it clear. I haven't seen anyone go over this as of yet. I even looked up articles just before making this video online to see if anyone had brought this uh, connection up. And everyone's just talking about the Shazam reference as if it's going to lead to something there. So I wasn't able to find anything in regards to what I'm going over. But if anyone has brought it up before this video, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. And I will link, th uh, link them in the description as the OG poster because I don't want to potentially screw anyone, screw anyone over and pretend like I didn't read their thing and actually did. You know what I mean? Now, the connection to Eternium in regards to a certain character on the show is actually that of Iris West. Now, I have no idea what I've titled the video, so I'm not sure whether you would have already known that before I said it. But yeah, that's the connection. Now, Eternium has a connection to the uh, to the 30th century in the comics as was first brought up in a Legion of Superheroes comic and those heroes are based in the 30th century. But in that story, a character called Thunder who basically takes on the whole Shazam powers or at the time the Captain Marvel powers was trying to find Eternium in the 30th century to piece back together the Rock of Eternity after it was destroyed. And obviously Cisco had no idea what Eternium was so it hasn't made its presence known on Earth-1 as of yet even though it's a multiversal element, but in the future, it could make its way to this Earth, whether it be from other points in the multiverse, or maybe due to some merging done during Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, in the comics, Iris was revealed to have been born in the 30th century and was actually sent back in time by her family just before there was like a civil war sort of thing between Earths. Now, upon arriving in the 20th century, Iris was adopted by Ira and Nadine West. Those are her parents' names in the comics, so there's no Joe West there. Although that couple, uh, uh, you know, her adopted parents never actually told her about her true origin. She eventually did reunite with her birth parents after being killed by Professor Zoom, aka Eobard Thorne, as they placed their deceased daughter's uh, consciousness in a new identical body in the future, essentially resurrecting Iris in the 30th century, once again, where she was initially born. Now, this was the time period in the comics where she is reunited with Barry and they have two children. You maybe might have heard of them, Don and Dawn Allen, the Tornado Twins. And this is before Barry actually has to go back to the present day of that time, which was just before Crisis started. Now, Iris does eventually come back to present day, but that was after a few different storylines. Now, you might be looking at that or listening to me read that and go, that hurts my brain. And that was just comic books that back then, that's literally why they did Crisis on Infinite Earths, because there was just so much crap going on, it was way too confusing. Now, as you would have seen in episode three, when Harrison Nash Wells had his little, like, Eternium detector out and he was, well, I guess, trying to detect Eternium, he kept getting readings off of Iris. Like, if you had a metal detector and you kept going off Iris, uh, like, over Iris and, she was, and it was beeping like that, you go, God, you got a lot of metal on you, don't you, Iris? And when this happened in the episode, I was like, uh, wow, what the hell is going on there? Because I wasn't that familiar with Eternium. I hadn't really heard of it, to be completely honest. I don't think many people were, as it is pretty obscure. But once I read up on this, like the whole thing of Eternium and I realized, wow, they're really going there with Iris. They are going to make it that Iris is actually from the 30th century. And this was actually hinted at heavily by Eric Wallace around a month or so ago when he was asked specifically about Iris's comic book origins, you know, in regards to the future. And he said that he was looking at making it happen, but then he, you know, said that he wasn't going to go into any more detail outside of that. So I guess the big question is if they go through with this, which, you know, that Eternium stuff hints at it, as well as Eric Wallace's comments from earlier on, if they go through this, is this going to like shake up the whole Joe West dynamic as well with Iris? Like what does their relationship become if it's revealed that Joe's not her real dad? Joe's not her real dad, it's just adoptive father. I guess it puts her and Barry in a very similar circumstance where, you know, they're both a, like, I guess, foster children, if you want to call it. Um, in the comics, Iris always like suspected she may have been adopted without actually knowing it. 
I highly doubt that's the case here, unless there was something when Iris was younger that she has like a flashback to and remembers something happening there where it seemed like that was the case. That could possibly happen there if they wanted to do that. Obviously, Wally West comes into it. So is Wally adopted or is Wally actually the son of Joe? And was it Francine, the mother? And it gets very confusing if they decide to go with this comic origin. But I guess one of the big things is like, will this change Iris as a character completely? Like learning of all this information, knowing that Joe isn't a real father, pretty much all she knew was pretty much a lie. And she's got this, you know, this origin in like a thousand years in the future. What does this do to her? Does this change her completely? Or is it just like a little thing that, you know, there's a little story arc, but it doesn't change Iris too much. But you know, maybe there's a bit of, a bit of, a bit of wiggle room there where they can do something interesting. Now, one thing I do need to make clear is that they actually did sort of retcon this in the New 52. From what I know, like they just basically changed it where Iris wasn't from the future. Um, but the Flash show, I think, does like to use the pre-New 52 stuff um, just because it is much more comic booky. And I think the Flash show suits being very comic booky rather than being a bit more, you know, gritty or edgy and stuff like that. Um, so I'd, even though they retconned it, I think, you know, they'll just ignore that. Obviously, in regards to the manhole, What's down there is just like a block of Eternium. The The possibility is maybe that whatever brought Iris back from the future could be down there, almost like a Superman-esque sort of spaceship, but it could just be like some little device of time travel. That could be under there, which then leads into a whole Iris backstory. Um, or maybe there's just some stuff from the future there that's brought back with Iris. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, but I can't wait to see how this unfolds, whether it happens very slowly and maybe doesn't get revealed to the back half or whether we go bang, bang, bang. And then it's maybe a big reveal just before crisis. Going to be interesting. But yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section down below. It's hard to know whether it's, you know, if I'm making sense or not sometimes, but if you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section down below. As I said, drop a like in the video if you uh, enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Goodbye.